So I'm Professor Neil Efferman. I actually am a professor at the Worcester Polytechnic Institute in the Computer Science Department, and I run the PhD program in Learning Sciences and Technologies. Well, so for the last decade, actually, my wife and I and my graduate students uh, and staff have actually been funded by the National Science Foundation and U.S. Department of Education to build a set of educational technologies that attempt to actually um, help actually teachers help their children better. Um, uh, mostly, it's actually kids are doing their nightly homework or daily classwork uh, inside our platform called Assistance, uh, blending instructional assessment and, uh, and uh, I should say, uh, instructional assistance and actually assessment together um, called Assistance. And, um, and we have about 50,000 kids that do their nightly homework and daily classwork in that system. So kids actually get immediate feedback and they get different types of feedback on the problems that their teachers actually want them to do. Uh, we work with a bunch of different actually uh, textbooks or actually open and free actually uh, textbooks as well. Um, we actually think the right thing to do is to actually have pacing still done by teachers on a daily basis, but for the computer to actually spend a little bit of extra time each night for the kids that need some extra help so that tomorrow morning they're all on the same page. It is mostly actually to do actually nightly homework, though uh, it is actually possible and in fact our study in the state of Maine actually indicated that lots of teachers were also using it during actually normal class time if they wanted to do a quick question at the beginning of the day, commonly called like a do now, uh, they'd do something like that and then they would actually look at the reports that actually tell them actually uh, what was hard and what were the common wrong answers. Looking at common wrong answers is something that we have a very easy time convincing 7th and 8th grade math teachers that it's worth going over. Um, and uh, um, and it's, it's worth talking to uh, about those common misconceptions. Uh, and even if they're not deep misconceptions, if lots of them actually had that sort of problem, they rounded to the wrong digit, actually recognizing that uh, and doing that empathetically, actually we think actually is a really good teacher move. So what is it that the kids are doing? So you would actually be doing uh, the homework uh, from whatever book they, the teacher actually happened to have around, or maybe it might be the freely, in, freely open actually OER, like the Engage New York textbook. Uh, but we had actually a bunch of different textbooks that were used. The key thing that actually was common across all of them is kids got feedback. So that is, that you're doing your homework on your piece of paper, your teacher still wants to see your work, but you're typing in your answers uh, and you're getting told whether you're right or wrong. Um, and um, uh, so that way you're not actually going home and actually getting actually all of you know the questions wrong, making the same common mistake, the same mistake, and then actually you know putting that into your brain over and over again. Um, um, and then the next morning, the teacher is going to actually look at those reports and have a class conversation. My my day job is me and my PhD students actually uh, build models to try to actually better understand student practice. Uh, and if personalization. Uh, is to mean anything. And right now we have ed tech companies all across America. I don't know them as well in Europe, but I'm sure we have commercial companies saying, oh, use our little personalized thing and actually everything will be better. Um, I'm here to t state as a scientist that actually our knowledge of what actually works is actually not very good. Though we're in an early stage of trying to do this. We have some instances where we're running studies where we actually know, oh, low knowledge kids, we should give step-by-step -step feedback. High knowledge kids, uh, we can just tell them, no, you're wrong, here's a complete solution, read it. Uh, and we know that actually you learn more like that. Um, but what are the real characteristics of actually kids and that so that we can try to figure out the right groups of kids to actually give the right type of feedback. Uh, and so uh, that's hard work. Um, and, um, uh, and so we don't know how best to do that. We're doing lots of A-B testing inside our platform and to actually try to learn what works. Um, but I think we're in the stone ages right now uh, of actually uh, figuring out what works and customizing to kids. And, and I think that's what people think. I think if you asked a parent, what do you think personalization means? It means they're, they're trying to figure out something important about actually your child and give them something that m matches their child. But uh, there's a lot that science doesn't know about that yet. Uh, I think actually some of the things that are that are really important and that are misunderstood um, in our national dialogue of personalization uh, is the fact that many of these ed tech companies are actually think the key to success is since the computer can figure out what's uh, when a kid knows something, let's let them move on um, and that child could be self-paced. It intuitively sounds like a great idea and it is disaster. 
uh, uh, in classrooms, we actually have teachers that look at actually kids on a daily basis. Having every kid on a different page isn't the solution. The solution is figuring out how to actually each night get kids caught up so that tomorrow they can be on the same page, the teacher can have some lessons. And I think actually many of the commercial products uh, here in America um, are, are really missing that lesson.